In this presentation, we will generate, analyze, print, and export to Excel a statement of activities, which is in essence an income statement type of report for our not-for-profit organization. Get ready, because here we go with zero. Here we are in our not-for-profit organization dashboard. Let's jump on over to Excel to see what our objective will be. So we're in Excel, I'm in tab 10. We're looking at the statement of activities, which is on cell T49, T49. This is in essence the income statement. However, unlike the income statement, which only has one column typically, we have here three columns, ones with, with restrictions, one without restrictions, and then the total. So you'll recall when we enter this into like a trial balance, we have to make this distinction of items with and without just uh, the restrictions with basically separate accounts. And then when we pull them over to the income statement, which is the statement of activities in essence, we can break them out side by side. Within the zero system, we have a neat feature that we can, we can use to be able to uh, enter this information and let it break out. That's gonna be the classification feature within the zero system. So what we're gonna do is make a, make a report that's gonna be similar to this. Now note that what we need is to give something, to provide something in steps. We need to be able to provide something that will have both the information, especially the expenses that are gonna be both in terms of function as well as in terms of, uh, of their nature, what they're used for normal expense categories and what they're used for like programs and admin and so on. So we, and we also wanna give this to somebody also like the board of directors in a way that's not too overwhelming. And so that's going to be our objective. So we're going to create a statement of activities that has, you know, two steps to it. Basically, we have this one that's not too overwhelming because we didn't add all the expense categories down here. And uh, and we didn't add all the different types of restrictions. And then we'll and then we'll include more detail with other reports, making it a little bit easier to, to take down, you know, piece by piece. <laughs> so let's for, we already did this to some extent in zero. Zero is great has a great uh, tool for us to format these worksheets. If we hit the accounting dropdown, we've already done one for a statement, um, income statement worksheet. Now I'm gonna make another one from scratch just so we can see it being made from scratch again. Uh, but, but you could also just simply modify this one. This one is an internal worksheet. It has what we need, but it also has some, some columns that we don't need over here. And so this is our internal worksheet. We could also do some other adjustments to, to these columns to group them together and of course change the name on it. So that would probably be the easiest way to, to do this is to reformat your income statement worksheet, save it again as another worksheet and make that your external worksheet. But I'm gonna do it from scratch just so we can recreate to these columns and see how they've been put together. So I'm gonna right click on this tab up top. I'm gonna to duplicate that tab. So we'll duplicate that tab. Let's go back to the tab to the left and this is the one we're gonna work on, but I'm gonna just make a normal income statement. So I'm gonna hit the accounting dropdown. I'm just gonna to go to a normal income statement now. And in essence, we're gonna we're gonna make it look a lot like uh, our income statement worksheet. I'm gonna add those two columns first and get us back to the starting point. So I'm gonna basically, I'm, I jumped back over to the worksheet. I'm gonna add the unrestricted and restricted columns. I'm not gonna add these two columns. And then we'll have, of course, the total column. Okay, so let's go back on over to the first tab here and I'm gonna say that uh, we want to customize this report, date range is good. Let's go ahead and edit, edit the layout of the report. And we're simply gonna add two columns to, to get that information. So I'm gonna go back up top, I'm gonna add a column. So we're gonna say I want a column. I'm gonna do it based on the unrestricted items. So we're gonna have unrestricted first. So I'll say unrestricted and then I'll hit the drop down here and I'm gonna choose, I'm not gonna choose unassigned, I'm gonna choose the 20%, the 20%, the 40%, the 20%, I'm not gonna choose the uh, unrestricted not applicable here. So we just want those, those four items, they should all be in there at this point in time. And we'll, we'll check that with our double checking features in our worksheet, but by the time we get to this report, they should all be categorized properly. So then I'm gonna say, okay, and then we can change the name here. I don't need uh, 2020. What I really want is unrestricted. So I'm just going to say, oh, I have to change it here. I'm going to double click on the blue area and call it unrestricted like so. So there we have that. Then I'm going to pull that to the left. Let's pull that to the left. Now this column, the total column, I actually don't even want it because I'm gonna, I'm gonna make my total column with a formula. So I'm gonna click on the total column 
and simply delete it by going up to the tap to the trash can up top and just deleting it and then we're going to go back and make another column i'm going to add another column and i'm going to say this is going to be the unrestricted so we'll say the unrestricted column information once again selecting the drop down i'm going to pick the government the long term uh and those are the two that we have here wait a sec we also have the time and so we have three here but we're not going to be picking the unassigned we're not going to be picking the na's uh those are going to be helping us as we do the data input by the time we get to this point there shouldn't be anything in those in those categories so we're going to say okay and there we have that and i'm going to double click on the name i'm going to make this unrestricted unrestricted so there's our unrestricted category and then we're going to make the total category so once again i'll go back up top now two ways we could do the total column we could have kept the original total right which basically includes everything in the income statement or i can use a formula so i'm going to use a formula here i'm going to select the drop down and i'm going to make a formula column so we're going to say this is going to be a formula i'm going to go into this item i'm going to say drop down we want to pick the unrestricted and this second one should be restricted so I named it the same name. So hold on a second. I'm going to say plus and then pick up the second column here. And we'll say that this is going to be double clicking the total. That'll be the total. And then I'm going to rename this column now. This one, I believe, should be restricted, not unrestricted. So this is going to be restricted. So there we have that. So now we've got unrestricted, restricted, and the total. So that looks pretty good. Let's say done. So I'm going to say done here. And there we have it. Now the totals of this thing should tie out to basically our income statement. And we're, we would check that on our on our worksheet over here on our income statement worksheet. And you'll recall last time I in the last presentation, I added a few more kind of check numbers for the for the totals. But this total column is 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 everything right here. So basically the worksheet that we have now, uh, this worksheet will help us to kind of double check those numbers. And that's why we want a worksheet like this, which will have a few other columns and uh, could help us with the double checking. And then we're going to have our external reports, which won't have those double checking numbers, but, you know, should be good because we've we've now done the double checking on the worksheet. So that's going to be the general format, this general format, then tying out to this general format here with donor restrictions and uh, with don without donor restrictions and with donor restrictions and then the total. So now I'm going to call it, I'm going to rename it. Let's copy the name and call it the statement of activities. So I'm going to go back on over here and say, all right, statement of activities. Let's see if we can adjust the name. And we'll say statement of activities is the name. And then down here, we could also do some formatting down here. Now note, I liked having these two separate accounts broken out here so that uh, it's kind of a double check in my opinion that uh, that we can have these although we only want we only really need one account called contributions which is now being broken out between unrestricted and restricted the same thing is the case down here we have net assets released now i like having the two accounts still that will net out but we really only need one in our report we might want to combine those for our report so let's do that let's say we could do that with a with a neat feature over here and in my worksheet i'd like to see those broken out but in the final report maybe we want those to be combined together probably would be nicer to have them combined together so i can hold i'm selecting this one holding down control and selecting this one i hold down control and then i can group those two together i'm going to group those together and simply call it then contributions contributions and there we have that and then there's our there's our group and then i can just hit this little triangle and that'll combine them together into a group called contributions we can do the same thing for these two i can select this item the one below it as well and then add a group we'll go to the right we're going to say i'd like to group those and we want to group those as the net assets released from restriction something like that and then we can go back over and hit our little triangle again. So I'll hit the little triangle and now those are grouped together. So that's really neat. So now we could go back over and say done. That's similar to like the sub account type of thing with something like a QuickBooks, uh, QuickBooks Online. But just note the flexibility you have to do that. I mean, I can make it, you know, I can make a report with it being like a sub account and one, 
with it not being like a sub account so that makes it you know look a lot more formal in some ways and, and like i say i want the detail in the worksheet i would like the detail in the worksheet in the two separate accounts and i'd like my, all my check figures over here and i like and i really like that i can then sum this stuff up in the in the final sheet so there we have it contributions now it's broken out unrestricted and restricted by category and then down here we have the net assets released from restriction and now it's broken out over here by the category as opposed to by the accounts and of course the total then being zero so there we have that everything else looks pretty clean now note a little bit of a difference down here we recorded it in in our normal kind of uh, report our statement of activities uh, by their nature because that's what zero will will basically use typically so we can't we cannot it's not as easy for us to break it out like we have it here which is by function first uh, and and then breaking out another report by nature so that's going to be a bit of a drawback but still not not too bad because we have it here by by uh, nature and then we will provide another report that we'll see in in the next presentation which we will put by um, by function so we'll add another report that will give us that more detail uh, by function and we'll we'll do that with the use of the classes so we'll add we'll add more rows and what that'll basically do is say each of these each of these rows now has more information that we can break this out into so we're going to give the information to our, our readers like this and then they're going to say what about what about the allocation of these expenses how are you using these you know uh, how much is going to programs versus other things then we're going to break out the unrestricted by by their category of what's included the programs and the admin and so on and give that report right and that'll give the detail there and then we'll give the other detail in terms of restricted items and say well what kind of restrictions do you have what are the restricted items then we can give further reporting information on those restricted items so there we have that now when we give this to someone there's a couple different ways that we can do this uh, we can we can send out this report we can print it or we can send it out save it as a pdf but if we're giving multiple different reports we might want to we might want to group this in a different in different ways so we'll think about the ways we can now process this one we'll, we'll print it as a pdf file that we can attach to an email two we'll send it to an excel file and the reason that's useful is that we can take all the reports we'll make we'll put them on that ex same excel file and then if i wanted to print them i can print them from the excel file the whole all four reports and not have to collate them they can all be printed rather than you have to shuffle the papers and collate them and also we can create a pdf file from it using a cute pdf printer and that will allow us to give one pdf file with all the reports we have instead of like five or ten whatever how many reports we have pdf files so let's do that now uh, i'm going to use something called the cute pdf printer in, in order to do the excel side of things so just note that you could export down here and you can export to a pdf file if you ever have a problem exporting to a pdf file if a system a database program or anything doesn't allow you to but you can print it then what you really want to use is this cute pdf printer or some type of pdf printer you want to have something in your system that looks that functions like a printer for the use of it but is really just going to be taking that information and printing it as a pdf one is called the cute pdf printer you can google it or you know use whatever favorite browser you have and find that and that should be a free a free tool to use really recommend uh, getting used to using it and so we're going to for here i'm going to say export to the pdf now I'm in uh, Google Chrome, so it's going to show the little bar down here that's going to have our, our uh, file. I'm going to put that into my folder. So here's the folder I'm going to put it in. So I'm just going to take that. I'm going to left click on it and drag it to my folder. So there it goes. So there we have that. And then I'll maximize this one. And I'm going to close uh, this back out. Now I'm going to export it to Excel. So I'm going to export to excel so let's do that and that should do the same thing there's our worksheet i'm going to minimize that i'm going to pull that into my into my folder too all right and then i'm going to i'm going to maximize this i'm going to minimize this again and then i'm going to open up the excel sheet this it didn't show up where's the excel sheet hold on a second i'm going to maximize this i'm going to make it small i'm going to take that and drag it into my folder here that's where I want it to go now there it is okay so now let's open that Excel sheet up so I'll open that Excel sheet up I'm gonna enable the editing 
And so, and so there we have it. So notice it does some little funny things sometimes with the editing, like this total column doesn't quite fit. I, I can make it a little bit larger. I'm gonna make it a little bit larger here. I won't spend a lot of time formatting in Excel, but I'll make it a bit larger. Also note it took out the grid lines. Sometimes I just copy and paste this into, a, into another file just to, just to get rid of some of the formatting items and also because I'm gonna copy other reports into it and I'd like them formatted exactly the same way. To do that, I would just make another plus, plus down here, another sheet, go then to the first sheet. I'm gonna select the entire sheet with the triangle up top. I'm gonna to hit the triangle. That'll select the entire sheet. That's important to pick up the entire sheet. And then I'm gonna say right click and copy. And then I'm gonna put that on this sheet and I'm gonna put it in A1. Make sure it's in A1. If it's in any other place, it won't let you paste it, right? Because there's not enough cells. So there's not enough cells to do so. So I'm gonna go up in A1 or you could select the entire sheet again and, and say paste. And so there we have it. Now we got the grid lines and now when I paste other reports in here, it'll be the same. And then I'm gonna delete the first report. I'm gonna right click on it, that tab. I'm right clicking on the tab and then delete that one. So there we have it. And then I'll call and I'll double click on the tab below and call it the statement of activities. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna, now this one, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna uh, print it at this point, but once I, once we do the other reports, I'm gonna add them to this worksheet. I'm gonna add them to this worksheet, and then we can use this worksheet to print to everything from this worksheet. So it's collated, and like I say, and or make a PDF from it that has all the files on one on one sheet, which could be really nice for presentation purposes and for emailing and sending and that kind of thing. So I'm gonna close this back out. I'm gonna save this. And then I'm gonna go into our uh, report here. I'm gonna rename it. So I'm gonna right click on it. I don't wanna just call it the not, the not for profit. I'm gonna rename. And I'm gonna say this is going to be the financial statements because we're gonna put multiple statements here. And this one I'm gonna rename and I don't really need the not-for-profit thing, so I'm just gonna say income statement. So we'll just say income statement, or it should be statement of activities, right? So it should be STMT of activities, something like that. So there's gonna be our reports. Now we're just gonna keep on adding these, so adding to our reports in uh, future presentations. The next thing you want to do, though, is you want to save this as your external reports now. So I'm going to now I'm going to say I want to customize and save this report and I want to save it as a statement of activities report. I'm not going to make it the default report. This is going to be my, you know, my external report. So I'm going to save that. So there we have that. And then if I go to the second tab here and just let's just check that it shows up here. I'm going to go to the accounting dropdown, go to the reports, and then within the custom reports now, now we have the ones that we're typically working with. These are the ones I'm going to put a star next to because those are the ones I work with all the time. And I'm only going to use the statement of activities, the finalized report when we basically you know, are finalizing this thing, when we're, when we're basically sending it out. Now, if I go back to the first tab, also note you, you do have some kind of formatting uh, items here. So we have the, the income statement, we have income, we've got the operating expenses, which you, you could name, uh, you know, it's not a bad name for operating expenses for a not-for-profit, but you could, you know, change it to whatever expenses it, uh, you might think that that implies uh, for-profit, but, you know, that's not too bad. But down here, the net income, uh, is usually not termed that way because net income people you might get the feeling of a for-profit so they typically call the uh, income down here rather than net income ending or I'm sorry increase in net assets so that's that's still a change that you can't do in zero even though you could do so much to, to customize in zero we would change that and you could change that if I open up Excel again obviously once it's in Excel you can do some of those those final little tweaks just for the naming. Probably wouldn't bother anybody uh, if it was not changed, <laughs> but but we're gonna say increase in net assets. Let's say increase in net assets. 
And so net income, I'm gonna, oh, they won't let me edit it. Enable editing. And then this is going to be increase in net assets. Now you might ask, why is it called that? That's a funny name. Because remember the net assets is the difference on, on, the, on the statement of uh, financial position. That's the equity section. Equity section being the assets minus liabilities or the net value of the organization. And this is what has happened over a time period, the income statement in essence. And so, you know, whatever increase in funds we got over the time period results in the equity section going up, the equity section being called net assets. So the bottom line of the income statement could be called the, you know, net increase in equity to, and for example, and it's not really done that for a for-profit also because in a for-profit you have things like draws and dividends which kind of complicate things a little bit but there are no draws here because there's no owners so the the difference in the net assets over time should be basically the um the the change in the statement of activity so you can call that the increase in you know net assets so that is that everything else formatting looks looks pretty good so I'm not going to get into too much more detail on that. And then we'll add to this report in uh, future presentations. That's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.